curiosity could be a powerful distraction. Well, we all know that's the case. Um, and actually, I think curiosity is probably the healthiest thing that any of us can have. Uh, just a quick sidebar, you know, just to, one of the themes of this book is in the film. Do I? No, I don't want to say that yet because that's going to be spoilerish. There's an undertone and a current and like a subtext in this book and really in the movie that begs you to question like what you would do under duress, under circumstances in the real world, how that would shape you, how that would change you. You know, like these aren't like unconventional questions to ask in fiction or narratives, but it really goes into like doesn't really go into but it, there there is a little bit of a subtext of like depression or just not depression excuse me i i got there i got there oh let me have a congratulatory sip for getting where i intended to go there is um an undercurrent of like how trauma informs like your journey, right? Like why are these people volunteering to go into Area X, right? Why do people go to space, you know? Like barring, you know, you're gonna be like the great adventure, like it, what is going on in your life that like you wanna go and like maybe die, probably die, you know? Anywho, curiosity can be a powerful distraction, yes. But I would argue that curiosity is the healthiest distraction you can have and is not just a distraction, but like a biological imperative specifically to keep you from becoming depressed. I'm remembering when I think of curiosity, I always think of Augustine Burroughs and the only book I've read of his is Running With Scissors. Again, read his book after having seen the movie. Um, and excuse me, I've read two books of his. So after having read Running With Scissors, I read one of his nonfiction books, which basically talks about depression and how it manifested for him and how he's learned to cope with it and live with it and um, and suicide and self-harm and all of, all of, you know, all of the fun shit. And one of the things he says that has stuck to me to this day since I read it in like 2014, 2015 is that, you know, happiness, and I'm not, I'm not quoting here, I'm just articulating it to the best of my ability that the opposite of depression is not happiness the opposite of depression is curiosity and oftentimes and other people have said things to a certain effect but oftentimes the best that you can hope for is to remain curious because if you remain curious you at least have something to keep you putting one foot in, for in front of the other um, whereas if you lose your sense of curiosity, then if you're already dealing with depression, um, suicidal tendencies or, or whatever, like there's very little to keep, keep you from slipping into the darkness. So that's a little bit of a sidebar, obviously, but it does play into like where this book and where the movie go. Um, she, the biologist, after they go into the, the tower, which is where we'll end on with chapter one, is really fighting like this sense of like, you know, I'm the researcher, I need to know what's going on, just natural human curiosity, like what's down there in the dark versus like, this is scary as shit, like, let's get the F out of here. And she says, I could not tell which part I craved and which I feared, which again, you know, our themes here are going to apply to all forms, all avenues and all realms of our life. Um, <laughs> so that speaks to, you know, like the journey, right? they're on this journey which is you know a micro of, of larger questions we can all ask ourselves and each other but one of the things i highlighted when i first read the book and is on my notes for discussion topic is this we were neither what we had been nor what we would become once we reached our destination now she's referring to having entered into area x and having already like these you know this fuckery is happening and you know mysteries and the tunnel uh, excuse me, the tower, um, what's going on, and, but again, it's like, why is Jeff Vandermeer, like, hitting us with the philosophy right on page 15, okay, why, I'll tell you why, because, I don't know, 
because it's awesome. So anyways, they go into this tunnel, which she refers to and feels implicitly is actually a t an inverse tower, as it were. So they go in there. Now, the psychologist stays up taught to, you know, keep watch or whatever. Um, the rest of them start to descend down. It's basically like a spiral staircase descending into the earth. They reach a landing. They're basically like a story down. Um, I think the, um, the surveyor goes down a level deep and they're like, okay, what's happening? We can't hear her. We can't see her. She calls up saying like, it's clear. It's okay to come down. So they, um, the biologist begins to follow her. I think, um, the anthropologist is there with her and they descend another level. Um, sorry, I'm reading, I'm trying to read like comments as they're coming in too. Um, and this is interesting. So the surveyor calls up from the top saying, you know, it's safe, calm down. She says, quote, it goes farther. So like their minds are being blown. Like how far into the earth are we going? And what's fantastic, and, and this is, and I quote from the biologist, she's in, the, she's in the tower on her way down. I thought again of the silhouette of the lighthouse as I had seen it during the late afternoon of our first day at base camp before they go into Area X. Because remember, lighthouses, everybody's talking about that lighthouse, everybody's trying to get to that lighthouse life. We assumed that the structure in question was a lighthouse because the map showed a lighthouse at that location and because everyone immediately recognized what a lighthouse should be. Again, going back to like mass hallucinations or just like collective unconscious or collective conscious knowing of what certain things are supposed to be. Like if I, if we all know what a lighthouse is, you know, obviously what she's saying. And then you, you happen across something that is clearly not that, but it's not the opposite of it either. So like as she's saying, like it's not a bunker, it's not a tunnel. It too is a tower, but it's the inverse of a lighthouse. I, I can't, I can't. Anyways, they're trying to like measure shit and she's like, why are we even trying? Like within these contexts, like we're in a different world. This is like, we're on page 20. This book gets so trippy so quickly. And this is where we're going to get into talk of like psychotropic drugs. Um, for folks that have not engaged in psychotropic drugs, you know, uh, you're missing out. But also blessings to you. But people can relate to how trippy this is without having taken psychotropic drugs. I mean, just the way it's written is so visceral and like, I can't even. But when I first got through the first chapter, I mean, I was already hooked, but I was just like, Jeff Vandermeer is, is writing like, maybe not an acid trip so much as like a, like a psilocybin trip, um, possibly even like ayahuasca or DMT. Um, not like the full experience of those trips, but the way in which things are about to transpire can only be compared in my experience to the things I've experienced whilst on acid or psilocybin. Anyways, I digress. Um, so they're, they're going down, they're going down, 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 down. And, um, uh oh, hang on. Nope, all right, sorry. Uh, the comments and the camera and then the zoom, it's a whole thing. So they're going down, 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 down. And what they, they begin to notice is that there are these dimly lit sparkling green vines progressing down into the darkness along the walls. Her instant um, comparison is to a memory she had of like floral wallpaper from when she was growing up. As she stares at the vines, which are in quotes, um, she saw that they were words. Now, let me read this ex exactly as it's on the page because she doesn't say the vines looked like they were forming words. She says, then as I stared at the quote vines, I saw that they were words in cursive, the letters raised off about six inches from the wall. So vines are in quotes. They don't look like words, they are words. So they're looking, they're looking, they're looking, you know, 
everyone wants to like touch it. She's like, don't touch it. We don't know what what the shit is. You know, you know, we don't need any contaminants and particulates going up the nose. Anyways, long story short, spoiler alert, um, particulates, uh, they're in the air. You know, there's particulates, um, you know, just like they were here in the Bay Area and in California last year, there's particulates. And, uh, she's she's basically as a biologist she's like this this is this isn't just vines these are um more similar to a a fungi and there are spores you know particulates coming off of the the situation here anyways here we go here's the climax of chapter one. Oh. as i came close did it surprise me that i could understand the language that the words were written in yes did it fill me with a kind of elation and dread intertwined? Yes. I tried to suppress the thousand new questions rising up inside of me. In as calm a voice as I could manage, aware of the importance of that moment, I read from the beginning aloud. She's reading the vines, the whatever. Quote, where lies the strangling fruit that came from the hand of the sinner I shall bring forth the seeds of the dead to share with the worms that dot 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 end quote. Let's do that one more time uh, for the people in the back. Where lies the strangling fruit that came from the hand of the sinner? I shall bring forth the seeds of the dead to share with the worms that and you know suspense right? So she's freaking out because she's she's saying like it would almost be less scary if this were written in like a foreign language because then we could at least or an alien language because then we could at least like we know we're dealing with aliens but because it's written in english it makes it even more scary because it's like what the hell is going on mm. yeah so yeah it's she's basically it's a it, the, the the words themselves are like a miniature ecosystem and this is where it gets trippy. She's like, other things existed in this miniature ecosystem, half hidden by the green filaments. Most of these creatures were translucent and shaped like tiny hands embedded by the base of the palm. For whatever reason, whenever I read that, I think of like Labyrinth when Jennifer Connelly's falling down the tunnel or tower of hands. Golden nodules capped the fingers on these hands. Anyways, she leans close to the particulates get in her nose. Um, spoiler alert. She asks herself, was I lucky or unlucky? Anyways, she's, you know, fully freaking out inside. She's not letting it show. Um, worried about these particulates from the spores in her nose. We don't know. Um, the information I was trying to process immobilized me. Well, I mean, <laughs> welcome to the world. Um, and again, she goes on to say, I would have preferred the words be written in an unknown language. This way would have presented less of a mystery for us to solve. Anyways, so they go back up the tower, the tunnel, whatever. They get out. Psychologist is sitting at the top and they're like, hey, some trippy shit went down. And she's just like, interesting in like a really eerie, calm way. And if you've seen the movie, Jennifer Jason Lee playing the psychologist it might be one of her greatest performances. I mean, she plays it with such nuance. Like she is so beautifully creepy and such like a, like a great embodiment of like how this reads in the book. Like you just, she's creepy AF as the kids say. Uh, yeah, so, you know, they're, they're processing, they're processing, you know, with the microprocessors. And all of a sudden, I think it's like the next night and, um, you know, they're, they're trying to, they're talking, they're having a couple beers, whatever. Biologist comes out and says, I think it's a tower, not a tunnel. Everybody's trying to process that. Then the psychologist stands right the fuck up and says, consolidation of authority. Okay. Immediately, the surveyor and the anthropologist go slack. Okay. So biologist quickly realizes, excuse me, this is, this is her putting people under hypnosis or the power of suggestion. This is what she had to do to get them through the perimeter, but she does not succumb to the power of suggestion. However, she plays along because she doesn't want to, you know, and we don't need any red flags at this. We have enough to deal with, right? So, and this is where we'll end. The psychologist, once she puts them under the power of suggestion, goes on to say, and I quote, hang on, I'm patched. You know, Pinot Grigio is really great for hydration. 
you will retain a memory of having discussed several options with regard to the tunnel. You will find that you ultimately agreed with me about the best course of action, and that you felt quite confident about the course of action. You will experience a, sens a sensation of calm whenever you think about this decision, and you will remain calm once back inside the tunnel. So obviously the psychologist wants them to go back down rather than go out to the lighthouse. Although you re will react to any stimuli as per your training, you will not take undue risks. You will continue to see a structure that is made of coquina and stone. You'll trust your colleagues and com uh, completely and feel a continued sense of